If you've been paying attention to the news recently, you may have noticed the protests around the United States in response to the killing of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer last week. You may have also seen plenty of pictures and videos of these, tear gas and stun or flashbang grenades. Chemical tear gas and flashbang grenades are perhaps some of the most ubiquitous methods of crowd control around the world. They have been utilized to disperse countless riots and protests in the past, and are currently being used against protesters in several cities in the United States. Lately, you may have asked yourself, how do tear gas and flashbang grenades work, or what makes them so effective? To answer those questions, you're going to have to learn a little chemistry. Let's start with tear gas. Tear gas is a loose term that actually refers to a large group of compounds called lacrimators. Lacrimators affect your lacrimal glands, hence the name tear gas. By reacting with nerves in your eyes and nose, they send signals to your brain to produce tears and irritate your mucous membranes. Upon exposure, symptoms include crying, burning pain in the eyes, and difficulty breathing. Imagine cutting onions, getting lemon juice in your eye, and inhaling smoke from a bonfire all at the same time. Now imagine that many times worse. That's exactly why it's used for crowd control. You can't focus on what you're doing, and instead leave the area to get away from the gas. Something you should also know is that tear gas isn't really a gas at all, but rather a dispersion of liquid or solid particles in an aerosol, much like cooking spray or spray paint. This has the consequence of the tear gas remaining close to the ground, which can be detrimental to protesters, and also settling quickly, which may be beneficial. On the other hand, a true gas would disperse quickly into the atmosphere and be greatly affected by the wind, lowering its efficacy. There are many different tear gases, but a common one is CS gas, named after the chemists who first synthesized it in 1928. CS gas is popular because of its relatively low toxicity, although this is often disputed. You see, CS gas is synthesized using a condensation reaction, releasing water in the process. The reverse reaction can also occur, where CS gas in the body reacts with water to form the much more toxic compound nitrile. For this reason, CS gas has the potential to cause lasting damage beyond just simple irritation. Flashbang or stun grenades are another piece of equipment with widespread applications in crowd control. They work by producing an extremely bright flash of light and a loud bang, yeah they're not named that way for nothing, to disorient and incapacitate the target. So how does such a small device produce such debilitating effects? Well, the chemistry is similar to that of a bonfire. In a bonfire, you have a fuel, wood, reacting with oxygen in the air, initiated by some heat supplied by maybe a match. First, replace that fuel with a metal like magnesium, which burns with an intense white light. Then, replace the oxygen with an oxidizer, like potassium perchlorate, which allows the magnesium to burn in the absence of air. This is essentially a flashbang grenade. Whereas a bonfire burns slowly and simply produces flames, the chemical reaction inside a flashbang grenade happens within a fraction of a second, releasing all of the energy at once in what we call an explosion. This is the bang in flashbang. Although grenades like this are considered non-lethal, like tear gas, they can also cause greater harm than intended. Informing yourself about how these crowd control methods work is your greatest defense against them. Whether you are in the middle of the protests themselves or watching anxiously from home, be aware of what tear gas and stun grenades mean for the citizens of the United States and of the world. Be safe. No weapon used for crowd control is without risk of significant harm. Hopefully, after learning some chemistry, you are wiser and more knowledgeable about that than before. That is why you should care about the chemistry of crowd control. If you liked this video or learned something new, Remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Also, please consider donating to my Patreon page, linked in the description, to allow me to continue creating more content for you. Thanks for watching.